Welcome to 13 Minutes of News. In 13 minutes or less. Um, sponsored in part by UberLiftDrivers.com, MiddletonTech.com, WorkSolo.com, MovesFinancial.com, and DisplayRide.com. Check them out, people. Um, okay, so here's what's going on this week. Um, first of all, same thing I always say. Uh, I know this is on YouTube, but parts of this ends up other places. Uh, so if this part is this for the other part places, uh, or you, if you're on YouTube and you've liked videos and you're coming back and you're liking them, please subscribe to the channel, Rideshare Rodeo. Go to Rideshare Rodeo and subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate it. Uh, coming, creeping up on a thousand. I want to get there. Uh, but everything I talk about on here, I used to list all the articles and everything in the beginning. Now I don't. I just put all news can be found at uberliftdrivers.com. Uberliftdrivers.com is known its sixth year, and it does not um, it does not relate only to rideshare. It relates to the entire gig community, micro mobility, um, weird projects, but really to the gig uh, community. So I mean, there's rideshare, there's delivery, there's the off brands that many of us use, uh, shipped, curry. Um, Rody, what, what, all, what all the things you might be doing, but um, a lot of independent contractorship too. Uh, there's a lot of articles I do where each article has that day's top articles that I saw that I found. So I do a lot of the legwork. You can find it all here at UberLiftDrivers.com. Let's get to it. Okay, so we got a few stories here today. Um, Actually, there's a lot of period. The last two posts, by the way, the one from July 21st and July 22nd, uh, are worth going into and looking at the stories. A lot of stories happened, and a lot, of, a lot of them are in there. These, a lot of different big stories have been happening. So, here's uh, what we're going to do. Though. We're going to first, I'm going to talk to you guys about Corner Shop. Um, for those of you who got to work Corner Shop, kudos, man. And I'm so glad. Uh, I never got the chance, and I wanted to. That was kind of the one on my list I had been waiting for, and now it won't come around because Corner Shop uh, was acquired years ago by Uber. Um, Corner Shop was originated in Peru and uh, does a lot of South and Central America, um, but they uh, sold to Uber, and Uber kept it as Corner Shop, which was weird. They usually put everything under the umbrella of Uber immediately. Um, and then you usually hear about through investors and, and you know quarterly reports and things like that they're going to start doing something like that. But Uber jumped the ball in this one, and Uber just decided that Uber or Corner Shop by Uber is now going to be they're going to slowly get rid of Corner Shop. I mean, you might see it at first and think, well, no, they're still no, they're going to slowly get rid of the word Corner Shop even because they're moving Corner Shop into the Uber Eats platform. And that's where I feel bad for everybody, especially me who never even got to try it. But for all of you corner shop workers who have been loving it, um, I'll give a shout out to John Dash, for example. I know John um, is a good friend of mine. I know he wasn't making a lot of corner shop videos because, as he said, he didn't want it to get saturated. He knew it'd get saturated, but he was trying to, you know, divert it a little longer if he could. And then he got that same email all of us did that corner shop is going to be in Uber Eats now. And I think we all know what that means. It's basically Instacart in the Uber app is what it is. And the pay model structure for the drivers most likely will go to something close to an Instacart pay model. And I, I had heard nothing but um, great things about the pay model for Corner Shop here the last since it's been around um, here in the United States. But anyway, that's a shame. It's happening. So if you never got on Corner Shop, you never will. Uh, but you will be able to use the corner shop. I don't even want to call it tech because if it was tech, it wouldn't be going to the Uber app. <laughs> the, you can use corner shop for grocery delivery now through Uber Eats soon. I don't know. Uh, again, I always say, and I just already said it, all these articles are on here. In fact, everything we're talking about today are in these last two links with, so the last two days I posted, you can find all these stories and way more. So, um, I, some of these I'll just tell you to go look into if you want to because um, I don't want to ever sound like too much the broken record, but sometimes I need to repeat myself. A lot of my history um, 
two two major portions of my history um, for work career, uh, production work and service industry, working in bars and restaurants. Um, all from owner to dishwasher and everything in between, um, GM. And I've been very suspect of, just like I used to be very hardcore about don't pick up minors if you do ride share, and I still am, hardcore. Um, I fight that all the time. Um, but uh, now, I've been very curious as to the drizzly confines because every state has its own ways that liquor licenses work. And even delivery drivers need to be packaged liquor certified or tip certified. That's what it's called here in Colorado. Every state's a little different, but they all have them. They've never done that for us. Makes It's always made me worry about, you know, if something happens, what's going to happen to the driver? Well, we're now seeing it because um, I was reading a few articles this weekend or yesterday that said that if uh, um, that there has been a lot of alcohol delivered to underage people, a lot. So it's it's a it's a problem. The biggest problem is where you'd lie if you even said, "Well, I checked the ID. I did everything I'm supposed to. I was working for DoorDash. I'm fine. You're not fine. Not one percent." So if you need that to be clarified, most lawyers will give you a 15, 10 to 15 minute consult for free, absolutely, um, at least with a paralegal or something. So go ahead and check that. You can uh, email Legal Rideshare if you want or any of those companies, but I prefer Legal Rideshare in Chicago. Ask Bryant you know, or any of his colleagues. Um, they will tell you that this ID thing, just like a lot of things with these gig apps, they're not like illegal, but they're not legal or defined and that's how this is being looked at and has been since it started is it okay that they're delivering this like so it's one of those things where i feel like you know when if drivers get busted or in trouble for delivering to underagers it we're not going to really hear about it till it happens to a few and uh what's going to happen is doordash whoever um Drizzly, your insurance, everybody's going to walk away from you without blinking because you're an independent contractor. So if you want to know more about this, leave comments about any of the stuff we talk about. Uh, I talk about here on 13 Minutes. Leave, leave a question in the comments after the show, not in the live stream if you could. Um, the live stream is just there for everybody to chat. I sometimes try and join, but I usually get this uploaded and I go out and take a hike or something But um, and just let you guys enjoy it. But when it premieres, uh, but if you could leave it in the comments of the video, I'll come back and answer it if you have stuff about this because uh, it's this is a big passion part for me too, so. Um, okay, and uh, according to, uh, um, well, all data, but let's talk about the state of Massachusetts, which, which is about to have their own AB5 and not let people vote on it, and this is about AB5. Uh, but I'm just going to point out something. Uh, according to the state, um, so for the Boston, and, and this, these are charts for Boston and Massachusetts, so I'll just give you the whole. Um, so Massachusetts as a whole state, here's the number of ride shares that happened on uh, app-based ride share services for three years. 2019, $91 82,437. They were having a very good year there. Um, 2020, the pandemic, 35,062,922. So a good drop there. 2021, 39,748,519. Um, so a little bit of a comeback. So far, this, those are all 12 month periods for each year. So far this year, they, you know, were. We're over halfway into the year, and they are not where they were at with the 39 million rides this year. Or last, where they were at July, this is today, the 23rd, where they were July 23rd of 2021 in amount of rides in the state, they're not at this year, which should be more. So, um, um, so basically, public transit is actually doing better. Things are doing better over there. Um, even the Uber, um, according to the Uber, Uber financial reports, uh, the company is now taking in more revenue from deliveries than passengers. So 
you might all think, like, well, that means Uber Eats is genuine. So, <laughs> let's see, what do I got here? Uh, okay. So, this is what I got to end with today. And then I might just kind of mention two quick stories if I can. Otherwise, you can find them again in the news roundups from July 21st and July 22nd on uberliftdrivers.com. Probably just leave it at that, but let's see. So, every week I've been at least mentioning the truckers, what happened. Again, this is don't always think this is AB5. This is more about the truckers because it made it very present to everybody what AB5 is. Even though it's been devastating for years, this is different. So they're protesting down south in California. They're protesting up north. 70,000 independent contractor, um, owner-operated uh, truck, uh, truck drivers in California just a week ago um, had their their partial AB5 carve out, I guess I'll call it, pulled from them. And now they are subject to AB5. So I'll give you a quick read so you can understand. California, Southern California is a mess. Northern California is um, a slower port, but uh, Oakland is a huge port. So let's, this is what we're gonna talk about. Um, independent truckers who began protesting a California gig economy law on Monday have blockaded the port of Oakland. Um, they are all the truckers are pledging that until Gavin Newsom gives them a sit down. So let's get that straight, guys. This isn't a lot of times, you know, like we talk, you know, when you talk about the unions, these are the truck drivers, not the unions. The unions would demand a sit down or they would just make demands. Do this or a sit down or we're walking. If you notice the, the lingo here, it's they are pledging to continue uh, this until Gavin Newsom meets with them about their concerns. Meets with them. Okay, that's Gavin Newsom should be on this. This is making news everywhere. Um, port officials announced that truckers have effectively shut down operations at shipping terminals at the Port of Oakland. The shutdown will further uh, uh, exacerbate the congestion and containers dwelling at the Oakland seaport. Uh, due to protests, the Oakland International Container Terminal shut down without a reopened date on Wednesday um, while they try and figure the international one. We can't get the containers to the international port because the truckers are literally blocking getting in. Not a protest line and this is not a, a online protest. So that's 13 minutes of news in just under 13 minutes. Peace!